We are back after lunch at Pocket Gamer Connects London 2018. I'm joined now by Noam Yassur from Twitter, but a specific part of Twitter. What's from Mopub at Twitter, yes. Mopub, that's what you're from. So now, you wanted to talk about stuff that you're working on this year, something specifically you mentioned uh, yeah, up front, so, which was uh, advanced, ad bidding. Advanced bidding. Advanced so bidding, yeah. Very similar to many, many, many people may be familiar with uh, header bidding mm -hmm. from the desktop space. So this yeah. really hasn't come into mobile or mobile in-app so far, uh, mostly because it was very much a copy-paste approach from desktop, right. uh, which doesn't often work in, in the unique space of uh, in-app. Uh, what Mopub is doing now, Mopub is to, for the people who don't know, Mopub is a monetization platform uh, for app developers, specifically in-app. Mm -hmm. uh, we help uh, app developers make money from advertising, uh, whether that's directly from our programmatic exchange, who's connected to around 180 different demand side platforms, mm -hmm. or from their, uh, from their networks, whether that's Google, Facebook, or any of the other networks in the market. Okay. Um, so this year we're launching advanced bidding. Uh, it's our version of header bidding, as we mentioned. Um, and we believe that will revolutionize the way you monetize with advertising in app. Okay, specifically with Twitter, it's a delicate balance with the advertising, because part of what, when Facebook initially started out, the idea was that there were no ads and it was a kind of ad-free platform, and then obviously that shifted. And then Twitter, it was kind of similar, and then ads started creeping into the timeline, and obviously it started being backed by money from outside sources. How do you sort of slip the advertising in there in a way that isn't offensive, that doesn't irritate users, but still provides value for money for the people actually paying for it? Right, so Mopub is, uh, while part of Twitter, we're not serving ads on the Twitter uh, timeline, so I can't really comment specifically on the timeline, of course. Uh, but the way we combat ad quality is we work with third parties, such as the Media, the media Trust, mm -hmm. who constantly monitor all our creatives. We also have a team of people who, who constantly review all of our ad creatives coming from the DSPs. Um, and any DSPs that have any violations will go under scrutiny and potentially be banned from the platform if recurs. Okay, so it's quite heavily regulated then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we believe that uh, both ad quality and supply quality, so where you're at or where the creative is showing for the marketers, are both important for trust and transparency. So from your perspective, where do you think people are missing a trick? The, 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 the stuff that you're working on this year where you think, like, this is going to revolutionize it and crack it. Why? What are you doing that's so different from the standard model? Yeah. So I think one thing that we still find surprising is uh, a lot of people don't consider programmatic as, as, as a mandatory must-do strategy for their monetization. Okay. Uh, a lot of people immediately think about networks, which is, a, a, again, is a must strategy to go to when you monetize your apps. Yeah. But on top of that, having programmatic is critical. Uh, some form of advertisers, such as mostly the brands, usually spend most of the budgets on programmatic. Now, if you as an app developer want to tap that type of budget, you've got to go programmatic. That's something that mobile does and have done for ages. Now, on top of that, what we do that's unique to us is we bring in all, the, all that programmatic budget and we make it compete in real time mm -hmm. against the networks. Okay. Right? And, and usually when there's more competition, the publisher wins. The publisher makes more money. So, you've obviously, I mean, I assume you've been in the industry for a while now? This is a few years, yes. Few years, yes. So what are the biggest shifts you've seen over time? I mean, everything moves so fast, especially in the mobile world. Yeah. What were the big shifts that you saw, and where do you think that it goes next? What's yeah. the next trend? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I, I joined this industry around 2010. Uh, my first job in this industry was within Mobi. It was uh, a very, very small office at the time. And going to similar events as this one, uh, most game developers wanted to do premium apps, pay to download, um, and with no advertising. Really, people just said, we don't do advertising, and just rudely walked away. Uh, we've gone, the industry has changed so much, and if you talk to most of the game developers in this room today, most of them will either tell you, I'm already making a lot of money from advertising, I'm balancing between in-app purchases mm -hmm. and advertising monetization. Mostly rewarded video is a great format for that. Uh, or they are seriously considering it and doubling down on that, right? So we've gone almost like 180 degrees from I'm not doing ads, ads are evil, to ads is a is viable uh, revenue source for my game. Yeah. And I'm already doing this, so I know that in 2018 I really need to do that. So shifting to that, obviously the free-to-pay model was a huge player in right. turning everything around there. And 
it's almost a brave person who chooses to release a premium like App Store release now. Yes. You kind of need to have that pre-established license or some kind of notoriety that will already push you to the front visibility-wise. Correct, it's a lot about uh, getting that featured. So if you, get, if you can get featured for a premium game, I mm -hmm. think that's still a very interesting strategy and probably more than it used to historically. Mm -hmm. Today people are more used to pay or easily put their thumb or their face these days to pay for an app. Uh, so, so it's easier to pay and people mentally or psycho uh, mentally are more uh, comfortable with paying through their phone to, or yeah. for an app. So that's, that's, I think, premium is a viable strategy. Although, how do you promote it? How do you get people to pay for it? That's always in scale, that's, that's always a challenge. So a publisher comes to you, let's say, and is looking to, to push something, and what's the first mistake that they make? Whenever they're consulting you, like, right, I want to get visibility for my app, or I want to start getting you know, a decent amount of return on the investment and getting the ad payments mm -hmm. paying off, where are they going wrong when you look at what they've done up until now? What's the most common error when it comes to promoting stuff? Uh, that's, uh, okay, do you get, are we talking about free-to-play or are we talking about premium or just talking generally? Just generally, like, yeah. let's say a free-to-play game, for example. Yeah, so I think one, you really gotta get your attribution correctly. You, 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 so, uh, even before attribution, I think today, the other trend we're seeing is the prof professionalization okay. of app developers. So if historically you said, hey, I'm going to just build a really cool game, put it in the App Store and make a lot of money, that doesn't happen these days, right? Getting downloads is extremely difficult. And if a couple of years ago, many publishers were uh, getting tons of organic downloads every month, uh, today this becomes extremely difficult. And what we're seeing is around 90, 99% of app developers are either having user acquisition in-house or outsourcing that to agency. Okay. But the, the, the times where you, you, you existed purely on organic is over. Right. Uh, and once you realize that, you've got to start thinking about your business, as your app, as a business. So you got a cost of acquiring users, and how do you make that user acquisition profitable? Right, so you got to think about what's my cost of acquisition per source. Mm -hmm. For that, you got to you, you need attribution. You got to think about uh, what's my lifetime value, what my retention, and how that all becomes profitable. Mm -hmm. So you need a lot of you got to invest in tools. Uh, attribution is one, analytics is one, yeah. and analytics. I'm a, a firm believer in having uh, data ownership. You got to own your own data. Uh, use one of these newer analytics platform where. They give you the platform, but you still host the data on a on a Redshift cluster. I talked to a lot of people, like especially last year, there was a lot of people talking about that. The idea of giving you possession of the analytics yes. and giving you control. Yeah, I think that that's key to, to being successful in today's market, because mm. uh, getting that couple of more cents on your ARP dial is critical. Whether you get, and, and getting that from either in a, in app purchases or subscription and advertising or a mix of those three is critical. So what's your big push for this year? What is it you hope to have completed and sorted by the end of this year? Yeah, so we, we've, as I mentioned, we're seeing a, a lot of app developers becoming more professional. And as part of that, everyone are seriously considering or already pretty pretty adapt to using advertising as, their, uh, as a main revenue source. What we're looking to do this year is making it uh, extremely more valuable for these app developers to make even more money. And we're doing that through, as I mentioned, advanced bidding. Um, that's one of the big pushes that we're, we're doing this year. Um, the reason this, we, this hasn't happened so far is that the networks who are a major revenue source for all app developers uh, were not able to participate within the advanced bidding uh, um, technology stack. But we're, we're, we're seeing shifts in the market that will help that change. And uh, we believe that by the end of the year, um, we'll see most of our publishers using advanced bidding in a way that will materially increase their yields, their revenues, mm -hmm. uh, with most of their major revenues, uh, ad sources. Okay. So that, that is a big one for this year. Um, and the good thing for, for all game developers, it's massive. It's, uh, it just gives them more benefits, more transparency, more control, and bottom line, more money. Which I think is what they're generally looking for, one exactly. way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great news, great to hear what you've been working on, and best of luck with it in the future. Thank you very much.